Let's talk about 11 different causes of leg pain, okay? Number one, lactic acidosis. Now, what the heck is that? Well, without getting too technical, it's a condition where you have too much acid going on in your legs, okay, lactic acid, and that is coming from your diet. You're consuming too many carbs and sugar, and you're severely lacking vitamin B1. And so now what's happening is you're getting a combination of acidity and lack of oxygen, hypoxia, okay? And your legs are going to be very, very restless. You're going to feel um, very uncomfortable in the legs, especially at night. I had this condition uh, for quite some years. I would literally get up in the middle of the night and have to pound my legs because they were so full of energy. And I had to go running. I was running in the middle of the night to try to get this energy out because they were restless, okay? They would not let me sleep. Little did I know that a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream every night for probably over a year caused this condition, not to mention the other carbs I was consuming. The more carbohydrate and sugar that you eat, the more B1 that you need to metabolize it, okay? And so that's the underlying cause. It's a B1 deficiency causing this because the diet's too high in carbohydrate. Number two, pinched nerve. Okay, now, of course, being a chiropractor, I've dealt with this a lot. You can have sciatica pain. You can have some nerve root pinched on one side that goes right down the leg. That's not necessarily sciatica. It's just a different nerve. But you have to realize the, the sciatica is a very big nerve. It's like the width of my thumb goes in the back part of your leg all the way down to the foot. And if there's some type of pinching, whether it is arthritis, a bone out of place, a disc, that could be one of the causes in which you'd want to go to a competent chiropractor to get it checked out. I have some videos on sciatica. The, the key with sciatica is keeping the lower back curve in. So you need a little cushion when you sit down and to keep that curve going inward. Because when you lose the curve, you start getting more compression and that can pinch the nerves right there. And of course, with arthritis, if you're consuming a lot of omega-6 fatty acids, the soy oil, the corn oil, the canola, those type of things, as well as refined carbs, you're going to be in a constant inflamed state that's going to keep the nerve pinched regardless of what type of treatment that you, you get. Number three, obstruction in your arteries, okay, in the legs. And so one form of this obstruction or blockage is called intermittent claudication. So intermittent means it comes and goes, okay? So Let's say you start exercising and your legs start going numb or they get cold or they get weak. That could be coming from this obstruction in your arteries and it's called intermittent claudication. Also, the circulation in your legs um, decreases to the point where you lose the hair in your legs. The skin on your legs becomes shiny, but typically this is worse with activity, especially if you're going up a hill, okay? Your legs just don't have the oxygen to move. So you're not going to be a very fast runner. All right, number four, low vitamin D, which is behind growing pains. Now, a lot of teenagers experience growing pains, right? Well, it has really nothing to do with their growing, okay? It has to do with a vitamin D deficiency. If you give them a little vitamin D, boom, completely goes away. And they usually get this at night, okay? In the middle of the night for a few hours, and then it gets better, worse. And it, it can be like a cramping in their calves, or it can be in the quads. Now, vitamin D is uh, really important in preventing inflammation and pain in your lower back. So if you're deficient, you can have a lot of lumbar problems in the lower back, as well as pelvic problems that can affect your ability to walk. It can even, if you're really deficient as a, an infant, it can cause distortion of the spine. Uh, it can affect uh, the curve of the spine. It can affect scoliosis. And this creates all sorts of problems with movement and motions because the muscles are connected to the bones. And so I think most people would be very surprised how common this is with leg pain, not just low back pain, but leg pain. So as a, if you're confused what's going on and you have leg pain, just start taking about 40,000 IUs of vitamin D. And within probably a day, you're going to find that that leg pain eases up tremendously. Number five, diabetes. Now, why would you have leg pain with diabetes? There's a condition called peripheral neuropathy, okay? So this is nerve damage caused because of the vascular component, the capillaries 
um, get damaged and they can't feed the nerves, okay, in your feet. It can be their feet pain or leg pain, and then it spreads into the hands and arms. It's called peripheral, peripheral. because those are the peripheral, peripheral parts of your body, okay? Now, what's interesting about this one is the remedy for this is actually the same as for number one. Well, actually, it's also the same for this one too, obstruction in your artery, because if there's a uh, some type of um, arterial sclerosis or clot or placking, that's usually too many carbs, right? So too many carbs or sugar, too much carb or sugar, too much carb or sugar. The remedy for this is vitamin B1, but you'd want to give it in a, a form that goes into the fat tissue, like the myelin sheath, which is the outer part of the nerve. So you want to give a person something called benfotamine, okay, benfotamine. With this one, you can give them just a water-soluble B1. I like nutritional yeast. But ultimately, the correction of this is getting rid of the carbs. But you can actually make a person feel better by just taking B1. And of course, the same remedy for this too. All right, number six, flat feet. Now, if your foundation is not supporting the whole body with the correct arch, boy, that can throw off your knees. It can throw off your hips. It can cause some serious, serious leg pain. I'm speaking from experience. I had flat feet. My whole life, I used arch supports. Didn't really work. Uh, in fact, it made things worse. Um, it wasn't until I got rid of those and started working on strengthening exercises and stretches that I got relief with this. And uh, now I wear these completely flat uh, sole shoes. They're called the uh, barefoot shoes, and they're great. They force your toes and your feet to actually strengthen the muscles, and it's the best thing ever. And of course, this one is tied in with a vitamin D deficiency probably early on. Okay, number seven, tight psoas and quads. I had this problem as well for many years from riding a bike. So you're doing this one motion over and over and over and you're strengthening your quads and your psoas. And then when you stand up, this is too tight and that's gonna throw off your back and that's gonna refer pain down to the legs. So we take a look at this so far. I had this one, this one, this one, almost had this one, but not quite. I, had, I was a pre-diabetic. This one right here and this one. So I'm talking from experience. But if we add number eight, I've also had old injuries and I'm talking to your ankle, okay? So let's say, for example, you sprained your ankle or broke your ankle on one side. You're gonna limp. You're gonna put the pressure on the opposite side. So you're gonna walk a little bit differently. You're gonna adapt to that. And then one, two, three years down the road, What's going to happen is you're going to notice uh, leg pain or ankle pain or knee pain or back pain. That's just because your gait has been compensating. I have a really good uh, video on this. I'm going to put it down below. And I also have a very good video on this one too, to how to reverse this right here. But this can definitely be a cause. In fact, you just want to ask yourself, um, have you ever had any ankle injuries, foot injuries, knee injuries? Okay. Have you ever fallen your tailbone? Those can come back to haunt you if you don't know how to fix them. Then I'm going to put some videos down on how to fix them. Number nine, deep vein thrombosis. So this is a little different than the uh, artery problem right here, but you can have an obstruction in the veins as well coming from the same root cause because there's an actual clot that's blocking blood flow, and that's definitely going to cause leg pain. All right, 10, overtraining. Uh, so many people exercise way too often, not letting their legs rest and recover, and they end up having soreness, and then they exercise over soreness, and they exercise over soreness, and they're just not connecting the dots. If this person gave themselves like a week or maybe even two weeks of rest, and then just noticed how much better their muscles feel because they allowed it to rest, they would really get it but they're just so used to this, you have to exercise every day, you know? Um, there's a couple points about weak muscles and nutrition. If you're low in vitamin E, your muscles will be a bit weak, okay? And you should even test that. If you ever feel kind of weak sometimes, take some vitamin E, wait about an hour and see how much stronger you feel, okay? When you walk and exercise. Low sodium or low salt, especially when you're doing fasting, can make your muscles weak. It's another cause. Now, low omega-3 will increase the time of soreness. So this person that does training should 
increase their omega-3 to decrease soreness and increase recovery. All right, number 11, stenosis. What is that? Well, you have the spinal column, okay? And then you have the spinal cord in the spinal column. There's just not enough space for the spinal cord. And so there's obstruction on the spinal cord and that can definitely cause leg pain, okay? So that could come from either the ligaments around the spinal column being too thick. It can come from arthritis or spurring, okay? Right next to the joints. Or it can also come from just inflammation that just won't allow the space to open up. So with this right here, I would highly recommend you work on getting the curve back on your lower back first, okay? I'll put the videos down below. Getting rid of the refined carbs and sugar, taking things like uh, vitamin K2 to help maybe possibly remove some calcium. And if you tried everything and nothing's worked, there's a really great non-invasive surgery that my mother did that was very effective and trim that thickened um, ligament and take out these little osteophytes and, and spurring. I mean, the hole that they go through is like a very small hole and they cover it up with a Band-Aid. It's not a major laminectomy where they're doing all sorts of uh, uh, invasive type work. Because here's the problem, when you do surgery, the scar tissue after the surgery is sometimes worse than the actual uh, before the surgery. So I'll write down that procedure down below, but there is a point where people need surgery. All right, so for the next video that you should watch, it should be this one right here for the tight psoas. I put it up right here, check it out.